Praise the Lord. We're happy you're able to meet us here together on our online service for New Found Hope Community Church. I am Ray Anthony Ruffin, Jr., the Under Shepherd of New Found Hope Community Church. In respect of the COVID-19 virus and the recommendations of our state, uh, we will have church, but we just happen to have a caveat in our service that we're going to worship the Lord online together. Praise the Lord, somebody. Amen. Amen. So in respect of that, I want to get right to the word this morning. Happy and excited you're able to meet us online. You're there in your pajamas and your fluffy shower shoes and, and all of those things. We're happy that you can do that and be comfortable. My prayer is, is that we can worship the Lord together. Amen. Now, if you have your Bibles, I would ask that you turn your Bibles with me to the gospel according to Mark. The gospel according to Mark, the fourth chapter, the 35th verse. Now, the Mark, Mark, Mark is the second book of the New Testament in which it's also called the Synoptic Gospel. You have Matthew and you have Mark. The benefit of you all being at home, you may be able to flip to the table of contents and nobody can even see you. Mm -hmm. Amen. We want to read the scripture together. And once you've found that scripture, I want us to, to act just like we sit in the sanctuary. Praise God. Uh, the Bible says in Mark chapter 4, verse 35, and it reads this way. On that day, when evening had come, he told them, let's cross over to the other side of the sea. So they left the crowd and took him along since he was in the boat. And other boats were with him. A great windstorm arose, and the waves were breaking over the boat, so that the boat was already being swung. He was in the stern, sleeping on the cushion. So they woke him and said to him, teacher, do you care that we are going to die? He got up, he rebuked the wind, and said to the sea, Silence, be still. The wind ceased, and there was a great calm. Then he said to them, Why are you afraid? Do you still have no faith? And they were terrified and asked one another, Who then is this? Even the wind and the sea obey him. For title this morning, saints, we're going to follow through with, Lord, help my unbelief. Amen. Heavenly Father, we come before you asking you, God, that you bless us to be a blessing. I ask you, Lord God, that you allow me to be used by you, Father God, as your conduit, Father God, to, to feed these, your precious lambs. Allow me, Father God, to be decreased, Lord God, as your increase. Allow us to find hope, that, Father, in this time of hopelessness. Help us, Father God, to find calm in this thing called calamity. Oh, Lord, as chaos is all around us, Lord God, we pray that you speak peace to our situation. Help your word calm the fears of your people. Help somebody find hope in you today. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Again, the subject title this morning will be, Lord, help my unbelief. Unfortunately, as Christians, it's very difficult for us to admit that sometimes it's hard for us to believe. It's hard for us to recognize that we go to church Sunday after Sunday. We go to Bible study. We're on every auxiliary. But sometimes things come up in our lives and it make it difficult for us to believe that you're about to come through. In order to be a believer, what we call a believer in this context is a Christian. To be a Christian is one who has been spiritually adopted into the family of God. While living in this material world that can't be overstated, we worship a God that we cannot see with the naked eye. Yeah. And we long to live in a kingdom that we've never been to. It should come across as no surprise, then, that we find ourselves more focused on earthly problems than heavenly solutions. Yes. I'll say it again, Lord, help my unbelief. In order for me to believe, that means I've got to have something called faith. Faith is described to us in Hebrews 11 and 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Now if you read Hebrews 11 and 1, you might as well drop down to Hebrews 11 and 6. But without faith, 
It's impossible to please him, for he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Now, if you want to mess with that word diligently, that means that you consistently look for God, that you look for God in your weakness, you look for God in your strength. You look for God when the coronavirus comes. You look for God when that thing passes on. That you're consistently looking for God in every aspect of your life. Yeah. Now, I just want to give you a pen in what I just said. Now, somebody said, I thought I had all of that all the way up until this time last week. That's all right. You're not by yourself. There's a lot of people right now that's wondering if they got it, who got it, who's sitting in their living room right now that got it, and the person that just sneezed, did they just sneeze in on me? Don't worry, you're not by yourself today. Faith, I want you to hear me now. A faith that can't be tested is a faith that can't be trusted. Uh, I'll say it again for the person that just came back from the bathroom. A faith that can't be tested is a faith that can't be trusted. James 2 and 14 says, what does it profit, my brothers, if what someone has says that they have faith, but they don't have works? Can faith save him? What James is trying to help us understand this morning, that it means nothing to say you got faith, and then when storms come, all our faith goes out the window. I'm so glad you asked me for some type of example. Well, the scripture gives us an example clearly how a storm can just come up in your life. A storm can appear when you look like the sky is blue and the sun is shining, but if you're not prepared, a storm can pop up out of anywhere. A storm is when trouble strikes. All right. We sometimes forget our knowledge of God based on the type of storm we in. We can know that Jesus is near, but that storm can make us forget how close he is. When the storm comes upon us, we can forget all about being cured of cancer, being cured of all types of diseases, being free from, from, from being incarcerated. But as soon as the recent storm comes, we forget all about what God has already done. Mm. Can I get two or three more witnesses in here that we can't forget that God got me out of something like this before? That God is a very present help in times of trouble. Yes. The Bible wants us to understand that only the situations that are happening today sometimes occupy our future thoughts. Mm, meaning that we forget all about what he's brought us through, but we become consumed with what might happen tomorrow. Right. Now God wants us to understand that in our own strength, we lack the resources and ability to meet life's challenges. I, because if you could cure the COVID-19 virus, then I'd already be defeated. If you could put more money in your bank account, you would have already done so. If you could find your own Boaz, you would already be getting on your nerves. But since you gotta depend on God, you might as well go to sleep because my God never neither sleeps nor slumbers, but we find ourselves trying to handle God's business. All right, all right. Our suffering is never a surprise to the Lord. He knows everything that we're going through. More than that, sometimes he orchestrates the circumstances in our lives. Watch this, stay with me, so he can get the glory and our benefit of growing in his will. That we're not going to get stronger as Christians, family, if we don't never go through nothing. Oh, Lord, help my unbelief. If a good coach wants you to be a strong free throw shooter, he'll make you shoot a thousand free throws after every practice. While your forearm is sore and you mad at your coach, when the game is on the line, the coach knows who he's already put through the ringer, and that's the one that's going to make the winning shot because they've already been through Y'all heard the word through the storm. All right. Reflecting on the divine purpose in this hardship can help us respond to trials in a God honoring way. Can you say God honoring way? That we all gonna respond 
but some of us ain't been responding in a godly type of way. We've been looking at CNN, we've been listening to the president, we've been listening to what everybody else gotta say, but have you turned your nose to what the Bible has to say about this situation? Have you heard what the prophet has said about what's gonna happen in this season? Have you paid attention to what your pastor was talking about for the past three years, but here and now is where our faith is going to meet the road. Now, Lord, help my unbelief. The Bible wants us to understand clearly today in verse 35, he says it this way, on that day, when evening had come, he told them, let's cross over to the other side. I'm, I got my Bible open today. Why don't y'all open y'all Bibles? And in verse 35, it says, on that day, when evening had come, he told them, let's cross over to the other side of the sea. So they left the crowd and took him along since he was in the boat, and other boats were with him. Hmm, now what's that say about that? Our first point of the night, of the morning, will be is this. Believe that you will make it to the other side. I just heard somebody get their breakthrough. If you online and you're having a good time, our first point of the morning is you got to believe that you will make it to the other side. I almost gave up the rest of my sermon, but in order to believe what somebody says, they got to have credibility in your heart. Ah, uh, it's hard to trust a man when you just got done with a terrible man. I think I'm preaching to somebody. It's hard to trust a woman when you had a woman that could get all over your nerves. Sometimes we find ourselves in recency and it's difficult to trust people, but I just want to tell you that Jesus said, let us go to the other side. And if Jesus gave you a guarantee, you can take that to the bank this morning. That Jesus says, if I said it, you can believe it, and it is already so. I, I think I got no witnesses here, so I bought my own. That he said in Matthew 11 and 28, that I will give you rest. If you got your pen and paper out, these old scriptures going to bless you when you find yourself worrying where it is. God. He said in Mark 10 and 27, with God all things are possible. Let me remind you of who I'm talking about. The reason you can trust that Jesus said, I believe we're going to the other side because Jesus has credibility. Jesus' words has power. Oops, I didn't follow myself in the Gospel of John. Jesus is the word. So if the word is confirmation of the word, you can trust that word. Matthew 24 and 13 says, the one who stands firm to the end will be saved. John 16 and 33 says, take heart, for I have overcome the world. Mark 11 and 24, here it is, here it is, tell your babies to memorize the scripture. Whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you received it and it will be yours. Somebody's praying for a sick co-worker right now. Believe that God heard your prayer. Somebody's praying that that cough is not corona. Believe that God has heard your prayer. Everything is possible to those that believe. Mark 9 uh, and 23. Now God says, if I said it, then you can take that to the back. All right. Now. Well, well. Jesus, he called for his disciples to get into the boat and go to the other side. I, I want to get in this sermon and go forward, but in order to properly execute the text, we got to go backwards to understand why he said what we're looking at right now. So Jesus was in the midst of the multitudes, and the multitudes was pulling Jesus in all types of directions. The only part that made Jesus tired was this, that he got tired that it was people all around him, and they didn't want the power in his mouth, they wanted the power of his hand. Now, if you got somebody pulling on your coattails, and they don't want you, but they only want what you can give them, that'll keep you tired. I, I know I got a witness in here. Do I got a witness on the east side? Do I got a witness down the south? If you're in your living room testifying, if people always pulling on you for your stuff, you're going to be tired. All right, now. Yes, you are. All right, now. 
Jesus said it's so serious. I got these folks pulling on me and making me tired. Let's go to the other side. That I need to come apart. Yeah, I need to come apart before y'all fall apart. I was made for this, but y'all wasn't made for this. That y'all need to get some rest. And I'm going to show you that you need to get some rest. Because the things that trouble you, I'm going to sleep in. I, 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 I'm getting too fast. I already did my text. But Jesus said, the reason we're going to the other side, because there's some folks around us we need to get away from. All right, all right. In order to get to where God wants us to go, we got to leave some folks behind. <laughs> but sometimes the folks that's been leeching off of you see where you're going, and you can call them little ships following you. <laughs> Verse 38 says, and some other ships came with them. You got to be careful when you follow the direction of the Lord, and some people just came along. Abram and Lot found out about that. Abram had a calling on his life. God says, go and I'll show you the next move. Go and I'll bless your descendants. Go and I'll do this and I'll do that. Whoever blesses you, I'll bless them. And the Bible says, and Lot came with him. Sometimes you can think you're being a blessing, but somebody else is living off of your blessing. Go ahead and preach and hear Ray Anthony Ruffin Jr. Now the Bible says in verse 37, and a great windstorm arose. Lord have mercy. I think I have found the place where we're supposed to be preaching. Mm -hmm. That I'm trying my best to go where Jesus told me to go. And on my way to be where Jesus told me to be, I'm in the middle of a storm. All right. All right. So that the boat was in the middle of a storm and it was being swung by water. He being Jesus was in the stern sleeping on a cushion. So they woke him up and they said to him, Teacher, don't you care that we gon' die? For our next point up the morning, that I need you to believe in your Savior more than your storms. I, I say it again, I say it again. Believe in your Savior more than your storms. There's too many times we give too much credit to what we're going through, and we don't talk about the one that's going to get us out. We study more about the virus than the cure. I can't spend all my days looking at what the news say about what I might catch and without reading about what I already got. <laughs> that the Bible says that by his stripes, I am healed. That if I'm not healed on this side, well, I'm healed on the other side. Jesus says, let us go to the... I just can't believe last week and change everything I believe this week. The Lord will make sure you get to where you're supposed to go. All right, now. Yes, you will. Yes, you will. Acts 16 and 31 says, they replied, believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. John 3, 18 says, whosoever believes in him is not condemned, but whosoever does not believe stands condemned already because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. Got one more one for you. John 14 and 1 says, do not let your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. I just want you to put the scriptures in your front pocket. This ain't the season for back pocket scriptures. Put your scriptures in your front pocket so as soon as you get ready to touch your face, I want you to reach in your pocket so before you can take it at your face, I need you to read the cure. Before you put something into your face, I want you to reach into your pocket, and that's going to keep you healed, and that's going to keep you whole, and that's going to keep you from being infected, because I'm reaching for the word before I reach for my own flesh. Oh, my God, that I want the Lord to protect me, and the way the Lord is going to protect me is for me to ingest the word of God. A great storm. 
rose up with these guys trying to go where Jesus told them to go. I know I got a weakness in here. Somebody says, I give like the Lord told me to give. But I still find myself in financial situations. I love like the Lord told me to love. But I still find people hating on me. Uh -huh. I, I, I serve like the Lord told me to serve. And it seems like they keep on taking advantage of me. But I just want to tell somebody, if the Lord told you to go, the reason he told you to go is because he's going to help you grow. In order to grow, you got to have some storms in your life. You got to have some rainy days. If you have sunshine all the time, ain't no seeds going to grow in your life. You need some rain to water that word. You need some dump cakes. You need some shade for what's planted inside of you to come out. If it's sunny every day, the things that's going to be uprooted going to be scorched out. So we got to be balanced in our lives, saints. You're going to have some storms, but I don't need you to get amnesia in this season. Jesus says, let us go to the other side. All right, all right. Yes. What you got to remember is, what did Jesus say about my situation? That I'm in the middle of a storm, but I didn't start in a storm. All right. All right. When Jesus told the disciples to go, the skies was blue. It wasn't quite evening yet, but it was on its way. Won't you understand the text and the geographical locations of what's going on? The place where they were on a storm, it was very uncommon for that type of storm to take place at night. Because normally when the when the, when night comes, the wind don't blow as hot. <laughs> but if God got a special anointing on your life, you become a person that's under a special kind of attack. You just a little closer to giving him your all. God gonna give you a storm so you can get strong and trust in him and not yourself. Well, well, well. These was trained fishermen. That a storm was not unusual. It's interesting how God will use something that you think you good at to show you how much you need him. Because we get arrogant, we get puffed up, we start thinking we got things going on. But I love the fact that we serve a God that says, when I say stop everything, everything got to stop. When I want everybody to spend more time with their family, everybody quarantine. When I want daddies to come home and start spending time with their kids, everybody quarantine. When I want people to start being grateful for what they pray for, season to remember. The storm ain't about punishment. The storm is about growing up, church. Yes, uh, 16 and 33. These things I've spoken to you that in me you might have peace. But in the world you will have tribulation. But I need you to be of good cheer for I have overcome the world. In fact, you are in one of three places today. Either you're in a storm, you coming out of a storm, or baby, you about to be in a storm. Certain storms are part of our lives. Storms come in the form of fake friends and real enemies. Storms come in the form of that only you and God know about. Don't judge your neighbor. We are respecting the space privilege at this point. Public storms are the things you go through that everybody can see. Potential storms are the things that got you anxious and waking up at all types of night. Location storms, the presence of the storm does not mean the absence of God. Just because you're in the middle of the rain don't mean that God ain't standing by with an umbrella. 
the closer now. I just spoke to three demographics of Christians. Yeah. I'm trying to come down everybody's road. Well. But here I am for you and you who's been serving the church and serving the church faithfully. It seems like, preacher man, the closer you get to the will of God in your life, the storm seems getting more and more intense. Oh, Don't gauge your walk with God based on how few storms you have. That's misleading. The closer you get to your purpose, the more difficult experiences you will go through. Why is it hard for me? Because God can trust you with trouble. Some people can't go through what you've been through. Some people can't handle what you can handle. Some people can't stay faithful to the Lord based on what they've been through. Some people can see all this year. The coronavirus ain't got nothing on what you've been through, but you still stand and trust it and believe it in the almighty God. This storm is not going to shift my position in God. This storm will not wash away my way of way God has placed me. This situation is not going to turn me away from following God. Now watch the text. My fear about a matter will not outweigh my faith for the future. All right, there you go. All right now. My fear about a matter will not outweigh my faith for my future. Jeremiah said it this way in 29 11, for I know the thought that I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace, not of evil, to give you an expected end. Mm. Now, this is not in my, my, my text, but I want to give you one more point before I let you get back to watching your Sunday cartoons and cleaning up your yard. Here it is in verse 38. He was in the stern, being Jesus, sleeping on a cushion. So they woke him and said to him, teacher, don't you care that we're going to die? Well, All right. Well, well. Here we go. Don't allow your doubt to dictate your direction. All right. Don't allow your doubt to dictate your direction. Because sometimes we trip on Jesus when he don't respond the way we think he should. Sometimes we ask questions, uh, not out loud in church. You know, we can't come off like we don't got it together. But when we're alone by ourselves in our cars, uh, we can ask God, where are you in my marriage? Uh, God, where are you with my teenage child? God, where are you with my crazy manager on my child? God, I'm in trouble, which means you should respond as soon as I'm in Hold on, wait a minute. That don't mean that he's God. If Jesus responded every time you want him to, that makes him a genie. Well, that is. Well, well. That is. All right now. <laughs> they doubted. Watch this, y'all. Yeah. They doubted his goodness. Uh -oh. They asked Jesus, do you care? Well. Now, hold on. These disciples, like somebody might be. I want you to switch places with these disciples, but I want you to remember what they just saw. They just saw Jesus feed 5,000 men. We're not even counting the women and the children. They saw Jesus bring Peter's mother in law back to life. They saw Jesus heal people that were afflicted in their bodies. They saw Jesus walking on top of water, and they had to go on earth to ask Jesus, do you care about me? Don't y'all judge these disciples because you might even say the same thing in your spirit. I know that he cast out these devils. I know that he cured disease. I know that he can change the plenty. But where is Jesus in my situation? Why come Jesus ain't showing up for me just yet? They ask Jesus, why don't you care? Fear can make you lose your mind. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yes. Yes. Fear can make you do nothing but think about yourself. Fear will make you talk to people all kind of crazy. We done lost our tact. We done lost our morals. When you go out in the world, you don't know if you're talking to a Christian or somebody in the world. But they said, you better run that toilet paper. Well, well, <laughs> all right. Proverbs 3 and 5 says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. Can I connect the dots? In your mind, you deduce that Jesus don't care. Mm. That's leaning to your own understanding. When we fearful, we have fearful thoughts. When we fearful, we have fearful rationale. When we're fearful, we have fearful conclusions. But Jesus is on the boat. I sure wish I had an organ right here. That you ain't got to be afraid like everybody else afraid when Jesus is on the boat. Look at the literal text of what they said. The storm came and it beat down on them. The waves were rising and the boat was rocking and the boat was shaking. The disciples this was the end. But the text says Jesus was asleep. Yeah. 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 But Jesus is trying to tell you today that I am your provider. I am your peace. And if I'm in the storm with you, and if I'm asleep, what you worried about? Go to sleep. All right. You got to recognize what position you in. You can't be no Christian on Sunday and Wednesday. And be afraid like everybody else Monday and uh, other days of the week. If you know where you position close enough to Jesus, you gotta act accordingly. Yes, yes, yes. 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 Don't you care? Yep. Jesus said it this way through Paul, 2 Corinthians 12 and 9. And he said unto me, My grace is enough for thee. My strength is made perfect in your weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me, meaning that I'm blessed, but I ain't blessed without Jesus. I'm anointed, but I ain't anointed without Jesus. So whatever through, I need to make sure Jesus is on board. And if Jesus is on board, I know I'm going to make it to the other side. Why? Because Jesus said so. I can't believe him for one thing and not believe him for the other. He didn't say that I will be a very present help unless the COVID-19 virus comes. He said I will be a very present help in time Romans 8 28 says, and we know that all things work together for the good to them that love God and are called according to his purpose. I need you to remember your purpose in the middle of the storm. Lord, help my unbelief. I know where I am and I know you got purpose for me. Help me to remember my Identity in the midst of this quarantine. Help me to remember who you call me to be. Help me to talk like who you call me to talk like. Help me to respond the way I'm supposed to respond. And when I mess up, God, allow me to confess my sins because you're faithful and just to forgive me of all unrighteousness. Forgive me for my fearful heart. Forgive me for my fainting tongue. Forgive me for my doubtful mind. Forgive me. Somebody got to hear Genesis 50 and 20. But as for you, ye thought evil against me. But God meant it unto good to bring to pass as it is this day to save much people. Oh, Lord, have mercy that you might be going through something just like Joseph went through something. And when you come out of this, there's promotion. There's availability to testify about the goodness of the Lord. What you go through today may be somebody else's blessing tomorrow. There was this, this young military officer. 
and this young bride, and they were just married. And they were sitting on their honeymoon on this voyage. They weren't on no cruise line voyage, watch out now. And they sailed into a violent storm. <laughs> and began the, the water started to beat against their vessel. Kind of reminiscent to what we're studying today. The young bride became very frightened and, this, and her husband wasn't afraid. Uh, and she got mad because she was more afraid than he was. Uh, well, that's a white testimony right there. And she became irritated with him because he wasn't scared like her. After a while, he took his sword out uh, and pulled it out the sheath. Uh, and he put the point of it up to her throat. Uh, don't y'all worry about it. It's just an illustration. Right. And she said and looked up at him and she smiled with love in her eyes. And he asked her this question, you're not afraid no more? And she says, oh no, I'm not afraid of the sword when it's in the hand of somebody who loves me. And now she got it. She understood the point. Why should I be afraid when the world is in the palm of his hand? Why? Should I be afraid when God created the oceans all around me? Why should I be afraid when the Lord put every living being on this earth? Why should I be afraid when I know who holds my future? Why should I be afraid when God says that I have started a good work in you and it will be completed? I'm just trying to ask you this question. Where is your faith? Yeah. 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 39. They didn't woke my Jesus up. Yeah. They didn't woke my Jesus up. Watch right. this. The Bible says he got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the sea, silence, be still. The wind ceased, and there was a great calm. Can you say great calm? I need you to speak that in your house. Great calm in my residence. Great calm on my child. Great calm in my head. Great calm in my heart. And then he says to them, why are you afraid? Do you still have no faith? That's what happens when you wake up preachers. You better let that preacher sleep when he sleeps. We wake up cranky. After they saw the witness of the miracle, the Bible says, and they were terrified and asked one another, who is this? Even the wind and the sea obeys him. Here's our last B. Believe that God is still in control. All right, now. Lord have mercy. I know that wasn't prolific, and it wasn't something you can tweak, but I want you to tweak this today. Hashtag believe that God is still in control. God gave me brand new mercies that allowed me to wake up this morning. God allowed me to make it to work and back every day last week. Sometimes, sometimes you don't learn who Jesus is until you go through a storm. Yes. Yes. They made a discovery about the person of Jesus. Yes. You know when something really hits you, you ask the question. You know when you eat them wings huh, at the after hour at 3 o'clock in the morning, <laughs> who made this? When something really hit the spot, you know that Kool-Aid from the 80s, the Kool-Aid that gave most of y'all diabetes. Who made this? It's perfect with this hot perch and these salty fries. This sugar gave me just what I needed. Who made this? When something resonates in your heart, it makes you inquire, who is the author of this blessing? I, I feel like I'm 
about to get happy in here. The Bible says he is the author and the finisher of my faith. And God, I now believe you allowed me to go through this storm to increase my faith. Amen. I'm just now trying to recollect before we got on this boat, you was just teaching about the mustard seed faith. Okay, God, I didn't really understand it in Bible study, but now since I'm going through something, you said just have the faith the size of a mustard seed. And then you went on in the teaching and said that this is going to grow six feet tall. It's going to grow six inches thick. I see the lesson now, Jesus. You allowed us to be on open water and see the storms coming, but my faith grew because I I 
care about you? Well, I just got to testify that God has given somebody a baby that the doctor said they couldn't get pregnant. God has given someone else a church after they got kicked out of a church seven days before. God can give you a word in the middle of quarantine. God
Right now, I'm going to give it to you straight from the preaching, and we can meet that way. But soon and very soon, we're coming out of this. And when we come out of this, we're going to be meeting again in Redford. Amen. We're going to be meeting again in Redford. And then I want you to partner with us online by giving. The way you can support the church is that you can meet us at New Found Hope Community Church. Hit that giving page and it will be a blessing so we can continue to do what you've called us to do. You can also be a blessing by looking at the banner on our Facebook page, New Found Hope Community Church. God bless you. We're praying for you and God's going to see us to the other side.